Have you ever had issues making a high quality seal? Well, today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a perfect seal every time. I'm Greg Bergeeg, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Pack Machinery, and this is gonna be an overview on heat sealing. Now, when people think of heat sealing, they probably think of something like these basic impulse sealers, right? So I press a foot pedal, or I go down by hand, I close a seal bar, a wire heats up, it does that for a certain period of time, it opens back up, and my bag is sealed. Yeah, that's probably fine in many instances, especially entry level type sealing, right? So I set some basics, but there's a lot more to heat sealing than that. Heat sealing really incorporates three factors. Time, right? So uh, how, how long I'm gonna seal it for. Temperature, at what temperature am I going to make that seal? And pressure, how much pressure am I applying to the layers of material in order to weld them together? You can really think about this as far as baking, right? I mean, all of us have, have, have baked something before, right? You set the oven for a certain temperature, right? And you wait till it gets the temperature. You do it for a certain period of time, whatever you're baking. And then in some cases, that time also incorporates cooling, right? Which is extremely important. And then the pressure aspect, that's really innate to heat sealing or, or welding of materials. In order to get a high quality hermetic seal, one of the most important factors is pressure, right? So the sealer you saw before, that was uh, all electric, it may be closed by a magnet. The sealer we seal here, our PT impulse sealer, uses pneumatic uh, compressed air to close and make this a seal. That ensures that when the material is closed and uh, the sealing cycle begins, those two layers or multiple layers of material are as close together as possible. So a lot of times people have issues with sealing, they're not even using compressed air uh, to seal and that's a, a certainly a critical parameter. Next up from that is temperature, right? So a lot of times people think about heat sealing and impulse in particular, they think, yeah, I set my temperature, I set it to seven. Well, that's typically not temperature. The way that basic impulse sealing works is I apply power to seal elements, the temperature heats up for a certain period of time, and then at the end of the cycle, it cools back down. With temperature control, which you see here on our med pack sealer, you're actually setting it for a certain temperature so the, the material, the, the elements heat up. Once I get to temperature, that's when the sealing process begins. And I adjust my power so I'm maintaining you know, consistent temperature throughout the seal cycle. And then at the end of the cycle, I also have, sometimes I have a cooling temperature, right? So the seal bar opens at a certain temperature or I have cooling time where the seal bars are still closed and, uh, and then they open back up at the end of the cooling time. This is especially important with materials like polyethylene, which uh, require cooling under pressure. In this video, you see gusseted bags being sealed or foil bags being sealed, right? So uh, in some of these cases, temperature control is extremely important. Uh, did you know that you could actually seal for a much longer period of time with temperature control since you're maintaining a steady temperature throughout the sealing process? Think of turkey on Thanksgiving. Next up, we have some of our larger Vertrod sealers. So, uh, you know, we, we talk about pressure and, and I talked about just pressure before. Here you see in our Vertrod PS, the large uh, cylinder at the bottom and that large cylinder is what's creating all of your jaw pressure to, to effectively weld the material together. Uh, what you also see is what we call biactive sealing. So the, the top and bottom jaws are heated as well. So that can be extremely uh, important, right? I've got heat from the top and bottom. I'm gonna be sealing the material more effectively than one side. And then as we increase the, uh, the pressure, as I get to uh, thicker materials, in this case, I have uh, fabric. This customer was making fabric coated panels. They were sewing them before and they wanted to go to a heat sealing process. It made more sense for what they were doing. Uh, as I do that, then uh, I, I require a lot more temperature as well and pressure and then and what you see in that video is actually not only are they sealing but they're trimming the material as well and then we can go even larger right so here we have uh our vertrod bs it's a uh, 144 inches that's that would be 12 feet wide <laughs> sealer so 12 feet wide you see the seal cylinders at the top to get the pressure that we need uh, there's adjustments of seal pressure we have temperature control uh, for the temperature aspects and and in this application uh, what they were doing was making large bags, large 12 feet wide bags, where you had two half inch seals, right? And then you had a flying knife that cuts the material in between. Pretty, pretty sophisticated stuff. And, uh, you know, it requires a lot of understanding of, 
uh, the, the sealing process in order to do that. And then, you know, we talked about impulse. There's also constant heat sealing, right? So here we're showing that. I mean, the bars are constantly heated. Uh, that works well in uh, mill spec applications or uh, uh, craft paper that you're sealing where the material is thick and it's going to absorb a lot of heat, right? So constant heat works well. It doesn't work well in materials that need to cool under pressure like polyethylene or other films. And then, you know, with constant heat, you probably also, uh, the most common way you know that is with a band sealer, right? So here we see a vertical band sealer, uh, sealing of bags. I mean, that's a great way of doing it. The, 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 the belts, everything is constantly heated throughout the process. And that works well for laminated structures, certainly. And then with, with the band sealer, you know, there's options, uh, you know, you can uh, apply date code, lot code, etc. So a lot of what we talked about with heat sealing has to do with the control systems. Um, you know, we have our medical validatable uh, controls and, and that works for a lot of different applications, not medical, not just medical device packaging, but anytime the uh, cost of failure of a seal is very high, right? So think about expensive electronics or other goods where, you know, if the, the seal is compromised, I mean, that could be thousands of dollars. And so with those systems, you have uh, time, temperature and pressure that are constantly monitored. And if any of them are out of, uh, out of spec, then the machine will alarm. And you can see that via sophisticated uh, PLC and controls. So taking the medical controls and, and what we know about sealing, you can really start to get into uh, more exotic materials. You think about PTFE, FEP, things along those lines, really uh, exotic sealing materials that require a lot of pressure in that case, they require a lot of temperature, right? I mean, we're operating in the five, 600 degree Fahrenheit range. Uh, we've got to control the, the temperature precisely. I mean, you see some of that here with multi-layer structures, uh, PT, sealing of PTFE. Uh, you also see what we call um, butt splicing, right? So I've got two materials and I want to put those two materials together and then I want to splice them to make a uh, a seal between them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, uh, seal and then trim the material at the edge. Right. So, and trim sealing is its own, uh, art as far as that goes. And that's cer certainly something that, especially with our Vertrod sealers, we're able to do very effectively. And then we can, you know, take that to some other, uh, applications, right? So vacuum, right? W vacuum is an area where you want a hermetic seal. We're able to do that with our nozzle style vacuum sealers, especially for, medical and other applications where I'm vacuuming the air out. Uh, I'm creating a nice hermetic seal. I'm probably even trimming off the excess material. That's an option as well. Uh, using our know-how sealing, we're able to do that. That's our PVK med there. Um, you know, so th that's, a, that's a good way of doing it. You can also do that in a vacuum chamber, right? So we have our Audion vac vacuum chambers and uh, they have all process parameters that are validated, including time, temperature, and pressure. And I must, uh, you know, temperature, there's a lot of different ways of monitoring temperature. Pressure. It can be with a the thermocouple. It can be via resistance. I mean, we have different ways that we do it on different systems. It can be, uh, you know, constant heat impulse. Uh, you know, depending on what makes the most sense, we, we have some solutions for that. So. And then, you know, you can apply that to different, even other types of packaging, right? So shrink wrap packaging where uh, you need nice strong seals there and we can do impulse wires, we can do hot knife, you know, again, applying this sealing know-how to ensure that you get perfect seals every time, which is obviously the goal here. Flow wrappers are another area where we can apply our heat sealing know-how, right? So, uh, you know, you're, you're wrapping uh, material at high rates of speed, wrapping products at high rates of speed. It can be something like an oriented polypropylene. It could be a laminated structure. I mean, there's a lot of different things that, that you do it with a flow wrapper, it's typically constant heat and serrated jaws to do that. And, and you've got precise temperature control. That's extremely important. And then on the bagger side as well, with our roll bag, automatic baggers, especially the ones for medical packaging that use uh, for Tyvek poly pouches or met pet metallized polyester pouches, um, you know, having those precise heat sealing controls is extremely important and, and leads to, uh, you know, zero defect seals. So I hope you found this uh, presentation useful on heat sealing, and now I look forward to taking some of your questions. Thank you.